Before getting too deep into this topic, I just want to give you a heads up that the answer to the question posed in the title is not a lot. In fact, we know almost nothing about Quinlan Voss's mission to Tatooine, but I've been asked this quite a bit, so I will tell you everything we do know about why Voss was on Tatooine during the Phantom Menace. For a little background, Quinlan Voss is a canon Jedi Master with a limited number of canon appearances, but in Legends, he had a rich story mostly told in the Dark Horse comics. He was known as an excellent tracker and undercover agent. His character design was based off of a background extra from Episode 1. The character was developed in the Star Wars Republic comics, and George Lucas liked him so much he even got a verbal call-out in Revenge of the Sith. He appeared in two episodes of The Clone Wars and the novel Dark Disciple, making him canon. But bringing Quinlan Voss into the larger story means he and Qui-Gon Jinn were on Tatooine at the same time within feet of each other. So why didn't they make any contact? Like I mentioned, Voss was an undercover agent. Approaching a Jedi might have blown his cover. Likewise, Qui-Gon would have known it could have been dangerous to show any hint of recognition towards Voss. So what was Quinlan doing there in the first place? Unfortunately, we straight up don't know the specifics, not even in Legends, which shocked me. The little bit we do know can be found in the Star Wars Republic series, specifically the Stark Hyperspace Wars. Ayla Secura reveals that she was also on that mission as a Padawan at the age of 16, and that while they were indeed undercover, Quinlan regretted not making contact with Qui-Gon. Just as we don't know why Vaz was on Tatooine, he didn't know what situation Qui-Gon was in. Ayla claims that if they had known how desperate Qui-Gon was to be stuck there, they would have helped. And that's literally everything we know, so why not have some fun and speculate a little? In the film, Quinlan can be seen surrounded by other Kifar, which is evident because they all have that yellow stripe across their face. So this could have been a very personal mission for him. I doubt it's a coincidence that he was there at the same time of the Bunta Eve race. In Legends, many Kifar had the ability of psychometry, which means that they could read the memories of inanimate objects. So maybe they were there forming some sort of illegal gambling operation. If they got access, they could touch the pods and gain insider information, which they could then sell to gamblers. And Quinlan was there to take them all down, which seems incredibly low priority for the Jedi Order. But the truth is, we just don't know, and we might not ever find out. The character was just an interesting looking background extra, and so were the other Kifar. I doubt Lucasfilm will ever put explaining that on the top of their to-do list. But it's fun to think about, so what do you think Quinlan was doing there? Leave your theories, serious or silly, in the comments. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel to keep up with Star Wars news and lore videos released every single day, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.